In tonight's Whatever Happened To segment, the Enron scandal. Erin Sharon tweeted us recently about it. She wanted to know what happened to the employees of that energy company who virtually lost everything. Tonight, the answers from correspondent Casey Stiegel. Garrett Ashmore started his first company from his college dorm room. By the time graduation rolled around, the young entrepreneur landed his first job with a prestigious company in Texas. I came to Enron and was in Enron North America, and then I went to their pipeline side, and so I was very fortunate to go start Enron Communications. It was the late 90s. Business appeared to be booming for one of the world's largest energy companies, Houston-based Enron. But it all started to crumble in August of 2001. They had created numerous off-balance sheet type of entities that investors were not aware of to hide poor results from investors. Federal investigators launched a massive probe. The findings showed corporate bigwigs inflated Enron's earnings by several hundred million dollars, then ditched their own stock before it all crashed. By December of that year, Enron filed for bankruptcy. Some 20,000 employees eventually lost everything. It was like a, a sledgehammer to the face. What followed would be years of legal proceedings and trials. In 2006, Kenneth Lay, the company's chairman and CEO, was convicted on 10 counts of conspiracy, fraud, and making false statements. There will be plenty to say later. Not, not right now. Can you, can you just tell us how you're doing? But Lay never spent a single day in jail. He died of a heart attack two months after his trial and before he was ever sentenced. Jeffrey Skilling had also served as Enron CEO. He too was convicted on nearly 20 criminal counts. I feel horrible. But that's, that's not to say that I think I did something illegal. In 2013, federal prosecutors announced they'd struck a deal, shaving 10 years off his 24-year sentence, making him eligible for release in 2018. Enron's chief financial officer also served time. Andrew Fastow was incarcerated for six years because of his involvement with the scandal. He got out in 2011 and now makes his rounds on the speaking circuit. He described himself, quite frankly, as the chief loophole officer for Enron instead of the chief financial officer. More than a decade later, Enron remains a top case study for business students and future leaders. Garrett Ashmore lived it, but managed to persevere. I lost a fortune, but I also gained such invaluable lifelong lessons. Lessons that helped him start and sell multiple businesses since Enron's fall. He's now the director of his own successful financial firm and runs a charity providing Christmas toys to children suffering from cancer. Ashmore never sued Enron. He says he'd rather focus on the positive stories. All the people who took their skills and went on to do good elsewhere. Doug? Casey Stiegel in Dallas tonight. Thank you, Casey.